My name is Amel Kirsch. I'm a lecturer at the Academic College of Tel Aviv Yafo. This year, I'm a visiting lecturer at Stony Brook University in New York. I'm a developer advocate at Incredibuild. I will have a slide about Incredibuild and a member of the Israeli ISO C++ national body. I'm also the co-organizer of the Core CPP conference and meetup group in Tel Aviv. Um, a word about Incredibuild. We do um, build acceleration by uh, distribution, distributing builds to idle machines or to the cloud and caching. Uh, if you're suffering from slow CI pipeline, either developer uh, CI pipeline, developer builds, or um, your entire CI pipeline for uh, release, uh, it's not just a waste of time. It affects your developer cycle and productivity. Talk to me. That it, that's it for that. And let's talk about move. Why do we move? What is the big uh, addition that was added in C++11 and, and still relevant today? And um, in, in a way, uh, I mean, we'll talk in a moment about move. Uh, I teach as, as I started. And even though move was added in C++11 and it is with us for years, um, for students it is new. And when they meet it, it's a bit complicated. And then when I uh, speak with other, others, veterans in, in, in the industry, it is complicated for all of us, in a way. So th this is the aim of the talk, to, to, to discuss student move. But let's just start with the motivation. Why, why do we need move and, and what's, what is it all about? So let's have two Godzillas. Uh, I use Godzilla as um, you know, something that we can think about, a big thing that is uh, expensive to copy. So we have Godzilla G1 that is created inside some kind of a factory. So let's assume that the factory, uh, we have the factory called Create Frightening Godzilla, and we can assume that Create Frightening Godzilla um, returns a Godzilla by value, okay? So we get this Godzilla, and what happens uh, on this first line? We just copy the Godzilla, at least before C plus 11. Why? Because we get something by value, we get it into G1, unless there is some kind of opt optimization, maybe return value optimization, but let's assume that the compiler couldn't do any optimization, then we have a copy. And the copy is a bit redundant because the Godzilla that was created inside the factory is temporary. It was created only for us, so we want to move it. Uh, G2 is created, then we create another spooky Godzilla and assign it into G2. And again, before C11, maybe there is an optimization by the compiler, but without any optimization, there is a copy through assignment. Then let's add a Godzilla to a list. In the standard library, when you add something into a container, the thing that you send to the container is being copied. So when I create a temporary Godzilla, the sweetie Godzilla uh, on the last line, this temporary Godzilla, unless there is optimization, is being copied into the container. And then the question is, why should I copy it? Why can I take just the object that is created? So I cannot actually take the object that is created uh, as the Godzilla Sweetie, or the factory create farting Godzilla or create spooky Godzilla, but I can take their assets. So I can say, okay, there is a new object on the list, or there, there is a new object in G2 or in G1, but instead of copying the assets from the newly temporary created, I can just steal, or maybe a nicer word, move the assets from the temporary object to the new one, and that was the addition of move semantics in C11. For that, we need a certain syntax that will allow the us to communicate with the compiler, saying, okay, we expect here something that is short-living, that is temporary. So uh, we have, for example, a constructor that takes a string. In the first one, in the first example, string by value. And in the second one, we use here the newly added C11 syntax of our value uh, reference. They were hesitating how to uh, symbolize our value, and they said, okay, we're not using ampersand enough in the language, so let's have two ampersands for our value, which means, okay, the string on the second constructor is an our value, is a temporary that is going to uh, die. So the, uh, we'll have an interactive session in which I will ask you questions. And we start with this first question. What will be called in these two calls, in these two constructors? 
So we're getting in the first one a, a string by value, in the second one a string as an R value. In both, we pass it to a data member called name, which is a string, okay? And then the question is, would we have a copy or a move uh, in which, uh, in each, a copy, a move? A. So I hear a, a, copy in A and move in B, because yeah, in A it's by value. So in a way, maybe we should copy. I hear a C. So the, the actual answer is C. This was, don't count points on that one yet, okay? Um, you, you will count points from the next question, and then I will ask how many got like all points, all, all answers correctly. Uh, the reason that this is copy on both sides is because once you have a name, you're considered as an L value. One, you, once you have a name, the A name or B name as, uh, as uh, parameters, as arguments that we got, have a name, which means that the compiler says, okay, you may use A name and B name inside the curly brackets. You're not, but you may. Maybe you'll add it some, sometime later. So once a variable has a name, it is not longer considered as an R value, so it means that in order to consider it as an R value, F2, std move it. This is the reason for std move. So the correct way to do that is for both. I mean, in both cases, I know that I have something that I'm not going to use anymore. The first one is because I got it by value, and I'm not going to use it anymore. It is mine. The second case, it's an R value, and I'm not going to use it anymore. So in both cases, I know that I can move it, which means that, what is std move? What std move does? It's a casting. It's a casting to our value. So in a way, it's a preserving casting that preserves constant volatile. If the variable was const, it preserves its constness. If it is volatile, it preserves its volatileness, but it just casts it to, to be our value because we asked to. So, okay, now the compiler will consider A name and B name as our values, and then since std string implemented a, cop, a move constructor. So then we call the move constructor. Okay, so if we um, want to know what is being called in, in each case, here we, we say that, okay, you call the move constructor. Why? Because we did the std move. So the argument is our value. So the table, uh, we'll see the table in a moment, but let's ask another question. Count your points from this one. What is being called here? We have a constructor now, and we do std move. Now, there is something bad here, because we actually got an L value reference. I mean, you are moving from an L value. But then the question is, if we actually do that, would it be a move or a copy, or maybe the code would not compile, or maybe it's compiler dependent? What do you say? I, I hear here would not compile. Any other thoughts? Okay, so count your points, okay? Decide what you say. And the answer is it will compile and copy. The reason that it will copy is that the std move will actually cast it to our value. What is the type after the casting to our value? What is the type of the std move of a name? Const our value. Const our value. Because const is preserved. And we got the original one as const. Const doesn't move. The reason that const cannot be moved is that usually we implement the move constructor and the move assignment as getting, accepting our value without const. The reason that we need our value without const is because we are going to steal. And then when we steal, we need to put null PTRs for the pointers, otherwise the other one that is going to die will just release the assets that we just took. So move semantics usually goes without const. Uh, and and stood string, we know that stood string, the, the specifically move Semantics for string is for non-cons, but it will usually be the case for any, any type. So if you want to know the, uh, what, which one calls what, there is this uh, um, table taken from Stack Overflow. The link is there. Uh, so if we have an L value, and we have all four cases. By the way, usually we'll not have all four cases. We'll have only the three rows. The fourth row is quite rare, not so useful. Why the fourth row is not so useful? Because you cannot actually move, you cannot actually steal from a const R value. Because you cannot feed it back with null PTRs. And then it may release 
its assets. There is a question in Stack Overflow, is there any use of the fourth row? By the way, questions in Stack Overflow on our value and remove semantics, do you know who is the first one who answers them? Usually, is triggered on that. There is a question, if it is not a duplicate, there will be an answer shortly after you post the question on our value and move semantics. So the person who is answer, answering with those questions usually, usually is Howard Inant. Howard Inant is the man behind our value and move semantics. So you get the answer from the man itself. That's cool. Uh, and there is a question in Stack Overflow, and he answered that. Is there any use of uh, const our value function that like expects const our value? And, and he has an answer for that. I like the answer, I had my own, so I added my own answer for the same question, it's in the link down there. Anyhow, if we are an L value, we go to the first one or the second one. We prefer the first one, because we are not const. But if the first one is not there, we'll go to the second one, okay? If you are a const L value, if you are a const L value, like the B column, then you can go only to the const L value, which is row number two. If you are an R value, most probably you go to three, but you can go also to two, which is the fallback, right? If I don't have a move semantics, if I didn't implement any move, I will go to the copy. This is the uh, resemblance. And the last one, constar value. If so, for some reason you are constar value, you will not reach three. So this relates to what we saw before. If you are constar value, like in this case, you will not reach the third line, okay? So there isn't any sense in trying to move const our values. In this case, by the way, there isn't any sense in trying to move something which is an L value. I mean, this is a bug, or it might be a bug. I mean, once you move, it means that the, the, the other function that gets this R value may steal the value, may take the assets and put null PTR. But I got it as an L value, okay? So I'm, I may still hear something that is still being used somewhere else, which is bug prone or, or actually a bug. Don't do that. Okay, in this case, what actually protected me from the bug was the fact that the function got it as const, which adds an additional reason for, oh, it's good to get const if, if you are not going to change the value. It protects your arguments. Okay. Um, Next question, you're counting your points. Is it valid to stood move an L value reference? So we just saw a, an example where I told you no, I, I mean in that example it was wrong. But the question is in a more generic uh, case, is it okay to get um, some kind of an L value reference? By the way, this is an L value reference. If there were, if there were two ampersands here, then it would be not an R value, it would be a forwarding reference, which is another matter that maybe we'll discuss later or not. Anyhow, this is an L value. You, you, do you remember that double ampersand on a template argument, on a direct template argument, are forwarding reference? There is a rule of that. So in, in this case, we got an L value reference, and then the question is, is it okay? Is it legitimate? And the answers are, it will not compile. No, you cannot stood move an L value, or compiles with a warning, or it will compile, but it's undefined behavior, which means don't do that. Or D, yes, it can be legit in some cases. Cast your votes. What do you say? I hear a bit of a D and then some Cs. The question is like on some cases. It might be that in some cases it is not legit. Maybe in other cases it is. Do you have in mind any specific case that it is legit? That, yeah, this is what we do. Yes, the answer is D, and the example is swap. Swap actually moves since C11. Since C11, swap is much more efficient than before, because if you want to swap two vectors before C11, they would have been copied through a temporary third variable. Since C11, uh, um, unless there is some kind of uh, maybe, uh, is there any swap uh, um, overload, specific swap overload before C11 for vectors? There is a, the, the, this is an interesting question. It might be. It might be that it would have been implemented as a specific overload for vectors, might be. Anyhow, 
You don't have to implement your own specific specialization, oh, it's not specialization, overloading for a type that wants to move. You just move the arguments. So here, I just move LHV, and it is okay. Why is it okay? Because I know that even though you sent me something that you may still use, don't worry. When I'm out of the function, you have a legitimate argument, you have a legitimate object there, which is the other one. I'm just assigning something else. If I know that I'm going to assign something to you, why should I copy the old value? I can steal the old, old value. The old, you will not use the old value. I'm going to override it with another one. So stool swap is an example. But you may have other examples for cases where you do want to move from an L value because you know that you are going to override the old value right after. So no need to copy. Be cautious with passing by value. There is a known um, say, saying that if you want to copy pass by value since C++11. Why? Because once you pass by value, then the compiler takes care of copying. And then you can take the copy that was created by the compiler and move from it. Which then, in a way, accommodates both cases. Either that originally the value that was passed was an L value, so the copy was created by the compiler, I mean, as, as passing the argument, and you just moved from the copy. And it also accommodates the case of, oh, the original was an R value, in which, is the, in which case there isn't any copy. So there is a rule saying, if you want to copy, pass by value. I mean, you will see, since C++11, many functions that expect a string by value, a vector by value, maybe. Saying, oh, I just want to copy your vector, so I take the vector by value. Yeah, I know that it is expensive, but I actually want to copy. And then I move from the copy that I got, because I cannot use the copy, it's a temporal, it's a local variable, the argument. But then, you should be cautious with this rule, because in some cases, you may misuse it. Let's take an example. Let's assume that we have a store function that takes a string by value. Why? Because I just want to copy it into a container. So I say, okay, I will move the local variable that was either copied, or maybe it is an R value, so it was just passed as is. So since I, I just want to move it, why should I get it as a reference and then copy inside? Instead, I stood move it. What is the problem here? Again? The insert copies, yeah, uh, but, but the insert here gets an R value, so, I mean, I'll be using the, the, this one. The, the, the problem is that we copy when we get into the function, okay? So the insert, there is an insert for uh, uh, set, there is an insert for set that actually would not copy here because, uh, I mean, I got here an R value, okay? There is an overload for an R value. The problem is that we copy even if the original string or the string that I provide is already in the set. Now, if, if the string is in the set, I will not add it. It's a set. So I actually pay for the copy even in cases where, oh, sorry, it was there. No need to copy. So I can actually implement that. And there are other cases where you see, oh, you get it by value. Why? Uh, because there is a rule saying if you want to copy, you can pass by value. Yeah, but you're not copying in all cases in your function. So you actually pay for the copy, even for cases where you actually don't need the copy. So again, take, uh, you know, think about that. There is a nice um, um, talk, uh, which I think I have the PDF by our Dinant, the man himself, on the inefficiency of uh, copy and swap idiom. The copy and swap idiom takes uh, the same uh, logic of let's take a copy and then swap as implementation of both move and copy assignment. And then our Dinant comes and shows that, yeah, but it is a bit less efficient, okay? So the rule of if you need a copy pass by value is fine, but it might not be as efficient as, what is the alternative? Okay, yeah, you convinced me. It might be that I don't need the copy, so what is the alternative? Take it by the reference, but then if I take it by reference, as a const reference, then I will have to copy it even if it is an R value. Because if I take it as an L value reference, then I don't know 
whether the original was an L value. I get it as an L value. Okay, if I get it as a const L value. So I will copy inside. Okay, so uh, other option. So you can either have two, both R value and L value, or folding reference. So there are, there are two options. One option is to say, okay, I'm getting, I, I'm having two. I will overload one for the L value case as a const, and then I will insert. And this call to insert will create a copy if there is a need for a copy. That's okay. And the other one is okay. You'll get it as an L value, and then you would still move do both. The same as you implement both copy constructor and move constructor. Or if you want, then you can take um, a T as a double ref. And then for a T as a double ref, you can say, okay, I inserted with stood forward to preserve its original value, its original reference type. Either it is an L value or R value, okay? Uh, this is what stood forward does, uh, which means that in a way I implemented once for both these two. Now, uh, since I want here to get only strings, for some reason, then I, uh, narrow that, I, I restrict that with C20 requires close to be a convertible to a string. I mean, without that, it would still work because the, uh, the set is set of strings, but they will get the compilation error if it is not a string as a compilation error inside the function. And in a way, I prefer, I prefer to get the compilation error on the call to the function and not somewhere inside. But you can, you can remove the requires if you are before C20. So this was on Passing by value. Okay. Uh, if I compare the alternatives, so uh, the, these are the alternatives by value. By value, you will pay for a copy for the L value. Okay. And, and, and the, the, the idea here is that the string was already in the set. Okay. I'm inserting an existing item. Because if it is not an existing item, then I need the copy anyhow. Okay. So for the by value case, if you send an L value, you paid for the copy, even if you didn't need that. If you go for a const ref for both, a const ref for both, then the L value, you know, yeah, I, I got it as a const ref. I, I, I mean, I pay for the copy, but I needed that. But for the L value, I pay for the copy where, where I didn't need to. I could move. Uh, if I get a, a both, then I do only the move on the L value. Uh, and here, I, again, do only the move. So, um, there is a link here that can show the cases. Um, and eventually, yeah, you should go with these. Um, what's wrong here? I have a function called uh, for, for um, concatenating two strings. Um, I'm using here my string instead of the std string uh, because if I want to check what actually happens, maybe I want like some printouts inside the copy constructor, move constructor, destructor, et cetera. Okay, so it behaves exactly as string, but I just want to have some more traceability. Um, what's wrong here? I'm doing some kind of things in order to concatenate, and then since the string was created inside the function, I just move it out. And the answers are nothing, the code is fine. B, returning a dangling reference. C, a performance issue, maybe you can do it better. And D, code doesn't compile. What do you say? I hear hey, and I heard also D. God seems to be fine. Okay, so the actual answer is B. Uh, and, and you should not return our value. I mean, returning our value is quite rare. Usually you should not return our value. And the reason is that you actually return a dead reference. Returning from a function should either return something that is still alive, then you can return it as a reference. Our value reference is a reference, saying, here you got a reference to something, and then I come in and say, I expected something to be alive, and I said, no, it is an R value. Yes, an R value is something that is going to die, not something that died already. Okay, so here, since the object ends its lifetime in the function, you cannot return it as a reference, neither L value um, or uh, R value. It's a dangling reference issue, okay? Uh, by the way, if I go, um, I'm not sure that we have time, but there, there is a link here and, and, and we can play with that with sanitizers and see that sanitizers will catch the issue, 
okay? If I go with other sanitizer, it's like allocate, uh, no, sorry, it's like creating a static array, rectangle brackets array in a function, and retaining the, returning the pointer to the array. The array is dead. Okay, so don't do that, okay? Uh, so how can we do that better? So uh, let's uh, ask what's wrong here. Okay, I, I amended the, the, the thing. I'm returning a my string by value. I mean, you convinced me. I cannot return something local as a reference. Not as an L value reference, neither as R value reference. So I'm returning by value. That's good. And I'm still moving that because I don't need a copy. Uh, I don't want to return a copy. And the answers are nothing, God is fine now, or you are still returning a dying reference, or there is a performance issue, or maybe code doesn't compile. What do you say? I heard a C. Okay. What else? Any, any other issue maybe that you think of? Maybe the code is good. I, I mean, you can count votes even if you vote for yourself as a guess, because it's an educated guess, right? And then if you're right, count, of, count your yeah, right answers, or even if it was a guess. So the answer is C, actually. Yes, that's correct. And, and why C? Because you should not move local variables. The local variables on the return is, ex, is being explicitly, sorry, implicitly moved. There is an implicit move of local variables on the return. When you return something local, the compiler will say, OK, I see that originally it had a name, it's an L value inside the function for all reasons. But since I see it on the return, it means that the function will not use it anymore. You're on the return, value, on the return line, okay, on the return statement. In which case, there is a rule saying that there is an implicit move of local variables on the return. By the way, the rule changed during the uh, uh, standards and they added more things that could have implicit move on return. It started with only local variables. Then they added arguments which you got as an R value and things. So eventually, don't to move something unless, unless you don't want to move something which is not local, not uh, an argument. Let's assume that I have a data member and I decided this data member is not being used anymore. Oh, then you probably need to stood move that because the compiler will not realize that, oh, you are not using it anymore. It is still held somewhere. Okay, so, uh, uh, but, but then it should be invalidated in a way that if someone would use it, you will get an exception or it, uh, you will have to handle what happens if something is being used after being moved. Anyhow, for a local variable or an argument, don't stood move. And then the question is, why is it a performance issue? It is a performance issue because once you move, the compiler cannot do another optimization, which is called NRVO, named return value optimization. NRVO stands for named return value optimization, where RVO is return value optimization. If there is a variable in the function with a name, then when you return it, the compiler can say, you know what? I will create this variable on the return position on the stack where the caller expects to get the, 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 the result. So instead of creating that as on the stack as a variable of the function, and then copying to the place where the return value should sit, I will just return it, I will just create this object as the return value to begin with. And then I don't have to copy it when I get from out from the function, okay? So the compiler can do that only for something which is a direct local variable. But once I do a std move, then it was not something that was in the function, it's a new thing. There is a casting. So the compiler cannot do an RVO. And then I pay for move where I could have no cost. So no cost is cheaper than paying for move. Don't do that. It will work. It's like a pessimization. Okay, so the, the right way to do is just to um, return it as is. You have a local variable, you want to move it outside, don't worry, it will be moved. As long as, of course, there is a move constructor, uh, a relevant move constructor for this object. So this is the way, this is the proper way. What's wrong here? We're on the next one. So I have a stack, okay? I decided to implement my own stack here in this slide, and the stack holds a vector, and in the push function, I'm getting something. By the way, a question, is this T double ref an R value reference, or is it a forwarding reference that was also called in the past universal reference? 
So I hear R value, even though there is a double ref on a T template argument. And this is the right answer. This is an R value reference and not a forwarding reference. A forwarding reference is a reference that the compiler say, you know what, it can either be an L value reference or an R value reference, which is a result of reference collapsing rules that we'll put aside. Anyhow, when you see double ref on a template argument, in some cases it is not an R, double ref is not an R value, it's either R value or L value, which we call forwarding reference. But it has to be on the direct, exact template argument of the function. If you had anything on that, like it is a const t, O, now it's not a forwarding reference, because you said something about the t. You said const. Or if it is not on the direct template argument of the function, like this case, it's not the template argument of the function. Where t comes from? From the class. So when you reach the function, when the compiler reaches the function, the compiler knows what t is already. So t was like deduced for the class. It's not a direct template argument of the function. In which case, here, t is the actual type and the double ref are r value. Okay, they stand here for r value. Yeah, C++ is complicated. So then the question is, can we take this r value and th th then may maybe instead of forward, you should not use forward. I mean, forward, saying forward here is, is the same as saying, is saying move. Because we know that t stands for an R value. Okay, this is one thing, okay? But let's assume that we say move. Is it okay or is there any problem? So here are the possible answers. T double F in push is not a forwarding reference, thus compilation error. Would it be a compilation error or maybe B? Uh, the T double ref, the T we know, R value reference, is not a forwarding reference, yes, we know that. Thus we support only push of R values. Or push may add to the vector a dangling reference, maybe. Oh, maybe this is the issue. Or D, push may inefficiently copy. What do you say? With that, I'll give you one more minute or two. You have to think about that. The answers are longer than, than the code. What do you say? Okay, so the answer is B. And the answer is B because it will compile. The four is, is misleading. You should use move. But it's still right. I, I, I mean, it's, it's the same as saying move here. When you forward an R value reference, you actually say preserve its R value references. Keep it as an R value, which is like saying move. Um, but then we actually accommodate only R values. Why, why this function actually accommodates only our values? Remember the table? Let, let, let's go back to the table. We, we have a function that expects our value, right? This function expects our value. Let's go back to the table. This is the table. We have a function like number three. Who can go into number three? Only C. All the others will not go in. The L values, they heard a rumor that if you go there, you, you can lose a kidney. I, I mean, don't go there. Uh, so, so they don't go there. Uh, the R value one is okay. Yeah, I'm done with my kidneys. Anyhow, um, you can go there, okay? So this is the overloading resolution rules. If you have a function that expects an R value, it can get only an R value. What type can get all of them? Const L value reference, right? If you have a const L value reference, it will actually be able to accommodate all four cases. Const, non-const, L value, R value. So this one actually cannot expect an L value. If, if I have a land value and I want to push an L value, so um, the proper way would be, this is option one, F2. Implement, you should implement two, one for the R value case and the other one for the L value case. Why should I implement two and not only the, the second one? Because if you implement only the second one, then you are not so efficient, because you always copy. Because pushback, I'm writing here on the overall resolution of pushback. There are two pushback in vector, one for R values and the other for L values. 
which the one for the L values copy and the one for the R values move, right? So I'm writing on that. I'm saying, okay, I will use the pushback with R value, and here I will use the pushback for L value. This is one option. Can you imagine the second option? Can you guess what is the second option? I heard folding reference. So the, the second option is to say, okay, let's use folding reference to accommodate both R value and L value, but then we should use something which is not the original template parameter of the class. So let's call it U, but then the function should be templated. So we'll have a template type name U. Maybe I want to say that U is like T, like using C++ 20 constraints. So I require that U is convertible to T using the convertible to concept from C++ 20. It's not a must. I can do without that. I mean, it will not compile if you are not convertible to T anyhow. But maybe I just want to say it on the function. By the way, saying that on the function adds some, it's not only for readability or documentation. Let's assume that somebody wants, uh, through Sfina, to check if a certain class has a certain function. Then this thing would, if you check, if you have a function that can call, uh, if a function push that can be called with a certain type, if the type doesn't correspond, then the Sfina will fail because the function doesn't correspond because of the constraint. If you work without the constraint, then a Sfina would pass, and then you will have a hard error, a real compile time error if you actually call it. So in a way, it is better to constrain, but that's a question. I mean, there are those who would say, no, no, it's not so important, or you can just... Uh, um, Skip that. Anyhow, I get the push of a forwarding reference. This is a forwarding reference because U is a direct template argument of the function. And then I forward. Here the user forward is correct, right? Because you are either an R value or an L value. Okay. Good. So this was the second option. Okay, we had the push. Now I'm coming to the pop of the same class. And my question here is for the pop, we actually want to pop something from the stack and return it to you. I return it as a uh, by value. Why? Because I convinced you already that, that there is a problem of returning something as an L value or R value. Even though, even though when I return it, it is still in the in, in, in the vector in a way. So I could I could think of you know what it's it's in the vector. I just you know maybe it's not in the vector because I, I call you see I call pop back, so it's not in the vector. I mean, it's in the raw memory of the vector. Yeah, but it can be, no, I cannot assume that it is in the vector, so I like copy it outside. I return it as a, by value. But then the question is, can I move it outside? So what's wrong here? And the answers are, the possible answer are, pops returns a dangling reference, or pop moves from a dangling reference, or pop is an undefined behavior, moving out from a vector is impossible. Or the reference is being invalidated once we call pop back. I mean, the answers are quite, the, there is a, a very delicate difference between the, the answers. L let's go through the lines to, to help you to assist with understanding what we're trying to achieve, and then you'll go through the answers. The first one, let's go, let's go through the first, first line in pop. I call back. Back on a vector brings me back, the back of the vector, the, the last element. And I can take it by reference. Yeah, I can take a reference to the back. And the back is still there. Back doesn't eliminate, doesn't uh, release or erase. It, it just gives me the back. Okay, I got the back. I got the last one. Then pop back deletes the last one. I mean, removes it. It's no longer, I mean, maybe it's still in the vector, but it is like invalidated. It's not, it shouldn't be there. I, I shouldn't access it after calling pop back. By the way, pop back, if I remember correctly, pop back is, is void doesn't return a value. So when you call pop back, okay, wh wh where is the back? Oh, you should have got it before. D you didn't? Sorry, I, I don't have it anymore. So I called back, got the back, pop back, okay, I have it. Uh, then, can I move E? Now, we can ask a question, should I move E? I mean, we just said that you should not move something that is local. So in this case, in this case, the local E is a reference is a reference. So
So if you just re return it without std move, then hmm, it's a problem. But, but then the question is, is there any problem in the code as is? OK, and you have the answers. What do you say? So I hear a D. Anybody with, anybody with C, maybe? Or you, you have in mind, uh, yeah, maybe you can move out from a vector. Can you move out of a vector? Maybe, but, but not like that. OK, so th the answer here, I'll give you uh, one more moment. You count, do you count your points? The answer here is D, OK? And, and there is a comment now that, that shows what, what is the problem. And the comment is, when you call pop back, on the call on pop back, maybe the raw memory is not reclaimed yet. But the destructor on the element that sits there is called. OK? So there is a dead element sitting, probably sitting in the raw memory there. Why? Because the vector doesn't shrink when you pop back. So the raw memory is there. I can actually access there, and maybe I will actually see something. Let's assume that the destructor, um, you know, called delete. I go to the memory, and the string is, is still there. So, you know, this, this is one of those bugs that I say, but it worked on my machine, right? Because it worked. I got the string, and the string was there. I used, and, and nothing. By the way, sanitizers, may find it or not, OK? But it might be when you call delete and you actually call, I mean, you reclaim the memory back to the operating system. It is not that someone comes with a bleach you know, and, and uh, cleaning it all. No, the, the string is there, but the memory can be reused. It's like a question in Stack Overflow that was something, somebody used a dangling reference and asked, but it worked. How come? And there is a very nice answer there. Maybe you, you, you know that. Great answer. I, I really like this, that answer. Uh, you can think about any, anybody who stays in the hotel, it's about hotel. Let's assume that you check out of your at hotel room, OK? And then after checking out, you realize that you still have the key with you. And then you realize that, hey, and I forgot a book in my drawer in the room. But I have the key. So let's go and take the, the book. Now, a few hours just uh, you know, passed between. Maybe one hour, maybe less, maybe more. I go back to the room. Would I find the book there in the door? And the answer is maybe. It's undefined behavior. And I go to the door, I open the door, I, and the book is there. And I read it, and something strange. I mean, a, a, a different plot. It's not the same book. Somebody else came in took my book, throw it to the garbage, and put another book, and yeah. Or maybe I go into the room, and I just fall down 10 stories down. Why? Because they're renovating the, the hotel, and you shouldn't go into this room. You have the key, OK? Maybe they forgot to invalidate the key, so it opens the room. Usually, the key is just invalidated. But yeah, it opened the room. But then, anything can happen. Maybe the drawer is not there. They just rearrange, rearrange their furniture. In, in the room, so anything can happen. But if you actually, if you actually found the book, and, and you know maybe even you have your uh, marker located in the right spot, don't count on that to repeat every time that you try that. Okay, so this one may go, but no, it's undefined behavior. I'm returning here and a distracted element. It was distracted when I called pop back. Don't do that. Okay. Um, I think that these are, th I, I point here to other Stack Overflow questions, but not to the one with the hotel. But if you look for Stack Overflow, invalidated pointer, hotel, room, whatever, you find it, it's a great, it's written much nicely than I described it. Uh, so the proper way is to, first, move the back. When I call back, I get back a reference. Then I can say, you know what? I want it to be an R value reference. And then I don't pay for a copy here. OK, I just move it to a local variable. It's not, and when you move it from, to a local variable, what happens to the, in, to, to the object that sat, that was in the vector? 
It's invalidated. Can it be distracted? Sure. An invalidated object must be able to be distracted. Th this is a rule. After being moved, the old element that was moved will call a distractor at some point. And the distractor should be able to distract it correctly, which means this is why we put null PTRs in, in the pointers. But it will not release my string, because my was already taken. I, I stole your assets, and you have null PTRs. So I have the proper string on my side as a local variable. Then I can return it as is, implicit move on return, and I can just call pop back. This is the right way to use move semantic. By the way, if I don't do, if I do not do the std move, then my code is less efficient. And in many cases, we forget to do the std move on something that can be moved because we know that I will not use it anymore. And the compiler cannot optimize that. The compiler cannot read your mind. The compiler cannot think, oh, I see that you are not using something anymore, so let's move it. No, optimizers do not do that. So uh, if you do not call std move here, you will actually copy. Um, and and uh, by the way, would uh, static code analyzers find out if you forget to call std move here? Not yet. I mean, maybe there are some that does. Uh, I tried that with Clang Tidy. Do you know that you can run Clang Tidy inside Compiler Explorer? There is a uh, talk by Matt Godbolt. Maybe we'll talk about that. Anyhow, let, let's press that so you'll see. I can open in Compiler Explorer. Um, and you'll see Clunk Tidy should be open here. Some I opened Clunk Tidy here, and it should come out. Yeah, and it gives me all kind of warnings on other things, on other things like um, don't use to the end line, use backslash n instead. You should not flash, whatever. But not on the thing that I do not use move when I should have used move. Okay, here. Oh. Oh, the proper way, but I also show the non-proper way. Anyhow, no, it just misses that. Uh, and the same, I checked that in, in the past with other static code anal analyzers. It might be that they can. It might be that they will, but manual code review is still required. Um, a side note, implementing move for getting no accept. Do you remember that you have to do a no accept on a move constructor and probably also on move assignment? What happens if I forget the no accept? A move constructor should not throw an exception. But if you forget to say the no except here, then the compiler cannot know whether the move constructor may throw an exception. And vector, when, ve when, when you uh, call pushback to a vector, and the capacity is exhausted. So there is a need to take all the old objects in the vector and move them or copy them to another location. Should the vector copy or move the old objects to the new location, to the new allocation? It should move. I mean, I don't need them anymore on that side. I need them on the new allocation. It should move. Why it cannot move if I forget to say no accept? There is an uh, issue. If, if I try to move and then move throws an, throws an exception, then I'm halfway through. I moved part of them. Then it would say, OK, so just move them back. No, move can still throw an exception. I'm in a zombie state. Part of my vector is here, part of it is there. I mean, I can go back in pushback with an exception saying I couldn't move. I, sorry, I couldn't do the pushback. That's, that's legit. But the user would be quite upset if I say, I couldn't do the pushback, and your vector is ruined. OK, you couldn't do the pushback, but why did you ruin my vector? You know, things happen. No, it should be stable. So. In order to make sure that you protect the vector, I must make sure that the call can be either rolled back, like, OK, I didn't do the pushback, but the vector is fine. If I do the copy, why then it is fine if I all, uh, only um, you know, do, did the uh, halfway? I still have the original one. When you copy, they are not distracted. So yeah, you, sh you still have the old one. You, you need uh, to, to distract the, 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 those that were copied. But you still have the old one. When you move, you don't have them. So if you do not say no except, then the compiler or the, the vector, vector itself, it's, it's, it's a library issue, OK? Uh, and it's in the spec. The specification says that if you, do not have a, if you have a move with, without the no except, the vector should fall back to copy. 
Uh, it might be. It might be. It might be that uh, static code analyzers might find it. Okay. Anyhow, just don't forget and accept. Oh, I have another better suggestion, better recommendation. Usually, do not implement move constructors. Just don't don't implement them, and don't implement also copy constructor and destructor. Go with the rule of zero. Most of your code should go with rule of zero. Ninety percent of your code should go with rule of zero, saying, "I'm not managing resources." I'm working with classes that manage resources, but it's not me writing these classes, it's infrastructure team, not me. Or it's the standard library, or it's another library. And then if I do need to implement a class that handles resources, it should handle one resource and not five or six or 20, like decoupling, okay? And for this resource, yes, I will implement move semantics. Let's continue. Uh, so. Uh, I, the, I have here the, um, uh, you can run it, you can, you can check it, okay? There is a link uh, with both options. You'll see that if you call in a loop the left one, you will see a move. If you call uh, in a loop the right one, not, not in a loop, you know, you just do a pushback to a vector that has 20 elements, you will see 20 calls to copy on your object, on your object. And if you have a no accept, you will see 20 calls to the move. Why 20 calls? Because the, the vector needs to move the 20 or whatever, 16, that were there already. Okay, last one. Um, are you ready? You can still earn points. Uh, what's wrong here? I have a my max function. Getting two here, is it a folding reference or a, um, our value? A folding reference. How can you tell? Because t is the direct template argument of the function, so we have two uh, folding references, and then we check whether the B, B is lesser than A, then we'll return A, this is the max, otherwise B. What's wrong here? Oh, uh, answers. I don't have answers for this one. It's, a, it's an open question. You can just shout out. Shout out. I mean, I, I do want to forward, because maybe some of the operation that I call behave differently for R value and L value? I, I don't know, I don't know which, but, okay, what, what's the issue? So the issue is that you should never move or forward the same resource twice or multiple times. Move and forward can be done only once because once you forwarded or moved, then the original one is invalidated. You cannot forward it again. Now it will work probably if the other side, you know that move and forward, move doesn't move. So it might be that I moved and I say, no, it will, I still have it. Yeah, sure, because the other one that got it didn't steal. Move <coughs> is a preparation for you now can be moved. This is to move. And then if the other one like less than, less than probably do not implement something specific for our values. So probably the less than there would not do any move. So yeah, maybe it works, but I can implement something and I implement it there in the link that actually moves in both cases for the less than. And then since I just, you know, intentionally just want to show that this can create a bug, when you go to the return itself, you want to return either one of them, it is not there anymore. It was moved from never call, move, or forward twice, or more than twice, more than once, sorry, on the same object. So let's summarize. Don't stood move anything without thinking. Don't stood move local variables on return. Why? Pessimization. Don't move something that is still in use by you or others. And don't move something twice. When I say don't move something that is still in use by you or others, you can still move L values. If you move an L value, that's fine. As long as you're going to override its value and the other side will pass to you the L value or you want to then use the L value can still see a valid object there. Oh, I, and, and you wanted to, that you will have a new one. But you cannot move from and then do some operation on the value. Oh no, it's, it was invalidated. Don't waive std move when needed, because then you will pay efficiency. You should std move an L value that has a name, 
and you know you won't be using it anymore, and thus can move from it. You can still move L values if the mood value will not, would not be used. A bonus slide. The code is a bit smaller. Okay, we can still read it. Uh, let's quickly see what we have here. Let's assume that we want to create a callback, okay, using uh, some kind of a lambda, and we want to pass into the lambda, uh, as in the capture, a unique PTR. How do we pass into a lambda a unique PTR? I have a unique PTR. I want the lambda to capture this unique PTR. Unique PTR cannot be passed by uh, um, as an L. It can be passed as an L value. I don't want to because I want it to be unique. I mean, passing unique PTR as L value is a cheat. It is like, oh, let's have bugs. Let's have the unique PTR be alive on two sides, which means it's a unique PTR, which is not unique. No, I don't want to pass it as L value. Um, I, I want to move it into the lambda. In order to move it into the lambda, I want to call std move. Okay, so in order to, I cannot pass it by value because unique PTR blocked its copy constructor. It doesn't have a copy constructor. So since C14, I can move something into a lambda using uh, an alias. So I'm moving the PTR into the alias, which can have the same name. And here, I'm having the unique PTR inside. Um, since I want to change max in this function, I, I uh, mark the lambda as mutable, because once you pass something by value, it is const unless the lambda is mutable. And the entire thing also wants to take an auto double ref, which is a forwarding reference in, the, in this case, and maybe forward it on in this complicated example. So in order to forward a double ref, an our value auto, you cannot do a forward and then inside the, the, uh, the angle bracket say, and now what is your type? Oh, I didn't have a template type, it was auto. You cannot say auto there. I actually need to put the type that I got. So the type that I got is using type S, S type, sorry, as declared type of S. And then I have the actual type of what was the auto. And then I can forward it. So we see that in, in some cases it becomes maybe a bit more complicated. We have the, the uh, full code here in this line. And that is what I wanted to do for today. Um, I think that I have time for one question, maybe. Thank you. <laughs>